In 2019, I decided to embrace minimalism. Since that point, I've been able to move to my dream location in the Scottish Highlands permanently, build our own tiny home, drop to working part-time, and create a successful business that fulfills me, all whilst embracing a slower and more mindful pace of life. This is how I did it. Good morning everybody, welcome back to my channel. This week I thought I would chat a little bit about money and finances and I've touched on this kind of topic a few times on my channel but I think it's a really important thing to keep talking about particularly with the cost of living crisis so I thought I would share a little bit more detail about how I save money and how I use minimalism specifically as a tool to do that. Before we get into the video though, I do want to have a massive caveat that I know that we are all from very different circumstances, we all have different responsibilities, different income, different outgoings, so this isn't a one-size-fit-all method, but I thought it would still be useful to share my experience um, because I have been able to consistently save and put money aside um, for a good few years now, so that's what we're going to be chatting about. First thing I need to do today though is take a sky out, so I thought I'd take you guys along with me, along with my day, and we can chat about saving, minimalism, and all that good stuff. Are you ready to go on your walk? Are you? Come on then. Let's go. When it comes to saving money and doing it consistently I think the most important step at least for me was to really figure out why I wanted to do it and why I wanted to do it personally I think a lot of people want to save money because they feel like they should rather than having specific goals that really make sense for them in mind so that was really important to me in the past you know that's been stuff like building a tiny home that was a really clear goal really important thing that I knew would like completely change my life and add a huge amount of value to it but it doesn't have to be an actual thing sometimes it can just be a feeling or a lifestyle you know the feeling of being financially secure or maybe being able to work part-time um, and being more free to do that if you're able to consistently put money aside so I think having a clear motivation is is the first step and then within that general motivation you know really defining a specific amount of money that you're aiming for um so that can be a overall goal so you tend to have like an overall this is what i'm aiming for and then i split that down to every month because my income comes in on a monthly basis how much money do i want to put aside each month and top tip that i learned and has made a massive massive difference to me is when i get income into my account i put it into my savings first i used to just sort of get into my account spend money as I normally would and kind of see what was left over and put that into my savings which wasn't really that, that useful you know it does mean sometimes I do have to take money back out of my savings some months but that's totally fine as long as I'm able to consistently keep some in my savings I'm working towards my goal and another thing that is super super important is to have a really clear understanding of your income and your outgoings and I think some of us can be a bit hesitant to do that I think we're pretty clear on our income but when it comes to how much money we're spending every month and what we're spending it on that can be a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> I know for me you know it did have some harsh truths of like unnecessary things that I was consistently spending my money on um, so now what I do every single month actually is I go through what I've spent money on and categorise it into different ways and kind of see if there's things that I want to improve or spend less money on or if I'm happy with it. 
So I have it all planned in Notion, as usual, because I plan my life in Notion. But whatever system works for you, I think if you're not clear in it already, then tracking your income or either, you know, retrospectively going back through your bank account or tracking it going forward can be really useful. And it just gets you um, a more feeling of control because you know what is happening with your money. So I think those things, you know, defining your motivation, saving first and being really clear of your incomes and outgoings and tracking if you need to. I think that's definitely the first step when it comes to consistently saving money. It might seem obvious in some ways, but I'd be surprised like how I avoided doing that for years and maybe some of you are the same. So yeah, that's definitely where I would recommend starting and has probably been, you know, quite revolutionary <laughs> in how I deal with money. But yeah, and then next bits in this video, I wanna chat a little bit more about income and also those outgoings and specifically yeah, how I've used minimalism as a tool to reduce those outgoings in some places. But first, I think we're due to get back to the tiny home and have a wee cup of tea. These days many of us are looking at ways to try and increase our income. I think since lockdown in particular people have realised that there are so many different ways that you can have your own wee side hustle, side business and diversify your income. That was certainly uh, the case for me in my setting up my own business Hippie Highland Living which I set up three years ago now and it's now a really important income source for me and it allows me to be a lot more flexible with my time. I think it's worth spending a little bit of time thinking about what you could potentially monetize in your life and upskilling if you need to. Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, which is my favorite online learning platform, and that is Skillshare. Skillshare have a diverse range of loads of different amazing classes, and a lot of them are focused on your career and helping you build a career that works for you. I've been a paying customer of Skillshare for years and it was fundamental in setting up my business. I didn't know how to do any of the things really I now do. So I've got, you know, learn how to film, learn how to write, learn how to market myself. I've done that all on Skillshare. One of my favourite teachers on there is Emma Gannon. If you've not heard of her, she is an amazing writer, author and podcaster. I highly recommend her book, multi Hyphen Method. She has actually quite a few classes on Skillshare and I've watched all of them. The first one I watched when I was thinking about starting up my own side hustle was Unlocking Your Potential, Five Exercises to Build Creative Confidence. Because I think confidence or lack of confidence is one of the barriers that faces us when we start thinking about sharing anything online, anything creative, whether it be for money or not. And I think Emma just absolutely nails it with that class and helping you feel a lot more confident. And it's definitely one of the favourite classes I've watched on there. YouTube is now a massive part of my life and I learned a lot of what I do now on Skillshare. One of my favourite classes was Sorelia Moore's YouTube Success Build an Authentic Channel That's Worth a Follow. I love her take on it, I love the fact that she focused on authenticity and creating something that is worthwhile. I probably use Skillshare most when it comes to writing because there are some amazing writers on there that have been sharing their learning. One that I rewatched recently, uh, again, this is the third time I've watched it, is Roxanne Gray's class, Creative Writing, Crafting Personal Essays with Impact. She is an amazing writer. If you've not heard of her, I'd recommend looking up some of her work. She writes these amazing essays and I've learned so much from her. If you're interested in maybe looking into Skillshare, maybe starting your own business or just learning something new, then the first 1,000 people to click on the link in my description can get a one month free trial with Skillshare, which I think is well worth doing. Thank you as always to Skillshare for sponsoring this segment of the video and I now want to move on a little bit to talk about how we can reduce our outgoings. The 
main lesson that I've learned from living minimally is to be really intentional just across the board but especially when it comes to my money. This means that every single purchase I make has been thought through and I have kind of rules in place to try and prevent any unnecessary spending or impulse purchases. These can include things like I don't browse so I have stopped completely you know going into shops and that kind of thing unless I absolutely need something um, and same with online that's even worse so I definitely don't browse you know I've got some really lovely clothing stores that I adore but unless I am specifically shopping I don't browse them and I also have lists so every year beginning of the year I think about the things that I'm allowed to buy that year and I write that down and I plant that in my notion and I can I also have like subcategories for that so one of my main ones is clothing so I have a list of what I want to buy that year and I pretty much stick to that sometimes things change sometimes things happen you know sometimes you know I ripped my uh, waterproof so I needed a new waterproof but it just gives me a guide and I also only shop for clothing um, seasonally so I only shop have four like shopping windows a year so I'm not constantly like allowing myself to buy clothing and that's been really really helpful and I think setting up these really good habits and I think having questions you can ask yourself so when you are wanting to buy something that isn't on your list then you maybe want to review that and think okay is this something I absolutely need is this really going to add value to my life that's the kind of things I ask but a lot of the time my number one question that helps is I have that motivation in mind and I always ask myself is this purchase worth sacrificing that and nine times out of ten is absolutely not. <laughs> so that really helps me. And I've been doing that really intentionally this year in particular because I have more, I have higher saving goals this year. Um, and it's been really useful. And also pausing. So if you have something that is more maybe impulsive and you've not thought about it, I always leave it for at least 24 hours and then decide after that point. And again, a lot of the time I decide like I don't need it. I don't even really want it. I don't, um, I've got alternatives that I can use instead. So it's having these habits in place to help you be more intentional, I find really useful. And also um, finding ways to lower costs or even have free ones. So for me, a lot of how I spend my time and all my favourite things to do happen to be pretty much free or very low cost. So I chatted about this a little bit in my video talking about how living slowly and simply can save money so I'll link that below if you've not seen that but the sort of things I love to do are going out with the dog in nature I am very lucky that I can do that just straight from the house here on foot and if I do I do take her out to different places so there's a little bit of cost with the fuel but not not a huge amount and obviously reading is a big passion for me so um, borrowing books in the library and friends is how I get like the vast majority of my reading material and then I think it's also worth spending a little bit more time a lot of the time to try and lower costs. So when I go food shopping, I don't go to one shop. I go to a variety of shops and I start at the cheapest and work up. And it's always things like that. And looking at your monthly subscriptions, first of all, figuring out um, do you need them? You know, that's that's those kind of costs, those regular incurring costs really start to add up. And I'm actually really, really strict with mine, um, you know, and I've, I've just been culling them. So for instance, I used to have Netflix, don't have Netflix anymore. And my thought process with that was, I don't watch Netflix every month. And if I do, I don't always enjoy it and I'm just doing it because it's there. So what I do now is I've, well, I've come off it entirely, but I've got the, you know, in my head, I'm like, if there's something that comes on that I really, really want to watch, like Bridgerton, <laughs> for instance, I can just pay for a month. I don't have that, have that rolling cost because um, those those really do start to add up so looking at those and also looking at ways to reduce them if not get rid of them entirely for instance I swap my like car insurance regularly because then you get the the beginner deal and it's just figuring out ways to be a bit more clever um, with how you spend your money and it's all these little tweaks that can really start adding up I mean then something else you want to think about and what I do is there are some things in my life I spend more money on but I've decided that that's very intentional and there's also other areas where I can cut. So things I spend more money on often align with my values. So my clothing, I try and get that from sustainable brands. Ideally I get it second hand, which is even better because um, it saves me money and it's also like eco-friendly. But sometimes I do get things new and if I get things new, I don't buy from fast fashion. I just buy from more sustainable brands. I appreciate not everyone has the 
has the budget to do that um, but that's something I can do so I do and the same with the food although I do cut costs and try and budget that and there's also certain things you know I wouldn't compromise my health so I want to make sure I've got plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables in I'd like to get plastic free where I can I like to get organic where I can but I don't mean it doesn't mean all of my food shop has to be like that it just means you know I vary it through the week and occasionally I'll just try and swap swap out where I can to reduce my environmental impact but that's something that's that's important to me specifically and you might have your own variety of that maybe there's something that you love to do and adds a huge amount of value to your life and that's something that you're happy to spend a little bit of extra money on and just let yourself do that something else that I've trialed is doing like a low buy or a no buy month year etc so if you've not tried that a no buy month for instance is something where you don't buy anything that isn't deemed as completely essential so like food and fuel bills that kind of thing but no other purchases um so I've tried that I've gone through um, some months doing that last year and this year I've been trialing that on like every second month basically you know I can look ahead and there's some months for instance where I have things coming up so presents that I need to buy for people although I don't really count those because I kind of count those as um essentials they're not really essentials but you know what I mean they're not for me but there's things that I need to buy in the month I won't do it that month but I might be doing it the next month and I've been doing kind of low buy years so I did low buy last year and carrying on this year and it just means that I I know why I'm doing it and this year I have particular saving goals so I'm like okay I need to be really like intentional with everything I spend and it's very very satisfying I think with thinking about budgeting savings and stuff one people think it's really boring and two they think it's really restrictive and it just means that they can't do lots of things they love but I just don't think that's the case I think seeing your savings grow you will feel so proud of yourself like I've I've got the feeling a lot of the time that um when I buy something yeah it can make me happy but when I don't buy something it can make me just as happy and sometimes happier because I'm like okay I made that decision um and it's the same with decluttering you know you'll find if you get into it it's almost as fun if not more fun to declutter something as it is to buy it <laughs> it's a bit weird it gets a little bit addictive um but like anything, you can go too far with it. And I think I've fallen a little bit into the trap um, because I want to be more minimal, being too harsh on myself. So buying something that it is important, but I I still feel guilty. Um, so like new socks. <laughs> I'm like, do I need new socks? Yes, most of my socks have holes in them. I do need new socks. Um, so it's all about balance. But I think there's a lot to this subject, to be honest. Um, but I just want to sum up some of the sort of habits and intentions and ways that I try and save money and try and be intentional and stick to my budget um which I hope is useful and I'm thinking of doing a specific planner for you guys so if you don't know I've got my own Etsy store and I have um got my own so living notion planner on there um but I'm thinking of doing like a specific one for like budget like a minimalist or minimalist money management well that's a good <laughs> That's a good title, I might call it that. Um, so if that's interesting, guys, let me know. And also, I'll probably write about this more on my Substack, so you can subscribe to that for free. So if you're not already, I'll put that um, in the description below. But um, yeah, for this is a little bit of a rambly, <laughs> rambly video, but I really do hope it's useful. And do share your own money management tips and tricks in the comments. I'd love to read them. And remember, you can click on that link for that one month free trial with Skillshare, which I think is, yeah well worth having the having a little gander on there thank you very much for watching guys as always and i will see you guys next week